be okay that we don't have to turn off the lights? I think you're all right. Yeah, pretty bright. All right, well, thank you for the invitation. This talk originated, it started at uh, Boulder Amateur Radio Club in February last year, and it created a lot of stir on the web, and then I invited to give an expanded presentation at Dayton for the Contest University run by Tim Duffy and ICOM, and then uh, YCCC invited me to Boxborough in August, so um, it, it grew then from uh, the Dayton presentation, so it's sort of been around the horn a bit, and uh, it hopefully is a, has a lot of information you enjoy. Get the, You're doing well get, over get, there. Get, get the, get the, get the, get the other first. It's a slideshow. There you go. That was a software guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. well, that's all there was. So see you later. <laughs> okay, you got to click down here. Yeah, I know. I can get the milestone. It should go page up, page down. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Spacebar usually works. Too. Right arrow. There we go. Okay, so why did I start testing radios? Well, I didn't wake up one morning and say, I think I'm going to test radios. Uh, I actually owned a Drake R4, and I uh, owned that since I was in high school. And I bought an R4C, and it got a good review in QST. And I got on the 160-meter CW contest, and guess what? The receiver was terrible. So I thought, well, this isn't any good. The review said it was great, and in reality, it folded up. So. Uh, obviously the radio is what it was, and if, this, if the test says it's good and it isn't, then uh, obviously the test is bad. So in the 70s, the league started some new uh, types of testing that we hadn't heard of before. I mean, before that, we had sensitivity and selectivity, and that was about it. So Wes Hayward and some other people at the league came up with some new things. Noise <coughs> floor, which was a, a new term in dynamic range. And uh, so here I had this radio that supposedly was good, and I said it flunked contest 101. So then the question was why, and uh, to see where we needed to go to, to uh, get some tests that really meant something. And this was about 1975. Uh, go ahead. Maybe 74, actually. So dynamic range really comes down to handling weak signals that you're trying to hear at the same time that the band's full of strong signals that you just as soon uh, reject <coughs> as much as possible. And when the league came up with their Designed for their testing there in the early 70s, it made sense. And most of the radios are that, yeah. What's your definition of a strong signal? Is something required to be uh, down the street or two states over? Or what, is, what, what would be a strong signal? Well, there, I have a chart that will show that. But basically, I'd say we start having strong signals or twice 20 over 9. Would, would start giving some radios problems. And uh, obviously, weak is you know, probably something in microvolt range or, or less than a microvolt. So, uh, uh, when the league started testing these radios and came up with this new method, uh, most of the radios had probably been designed in the 60s or maybe in the 50s, so, and the tests were valid. Uh, they had two signals, uh, 20 kilohertz apart with their wide space testing, which is, it was the only testing at that point, and uh, that was all right. But then the newer radios came along that, uh, in the case of the Drake, which was the one that broke in my case, but really any radio, if you've got a first IF that's wide, which was a new concept, whether it's an up version <coughs> radio like we've had now for 25 years or so, or it had an IF at some other frequency, the question, the issue was, is the first IF wide in relation to our final selectivity? And so if it was, uh, then the test that didn't really test anything but the front end. So the 2KC, the 20KC test didn't show that there was a potential problem. So what did I have to do it was really simple. Well, instead of having these signals way far apart, we just bring them close in together. So the test signals not only go through the front end, but they go through the first IF filter and into the second mixture and the amplifiers and all that. So we got to test the whole radio, you know, up in effect up to a final selectivity. So Wide space <coughs> numbers, as you've, you started seeing in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, were always much better than the close-in numbers that when I started doing that 2 KC testing in uh, 1976. But, so there's a lot to choosing a radio. And so here's just a list of things that I consider important. We're not going to be able to talk about all these today. But we have dynamic range, noise floor. Phase noise, that has to do with your LO. I mean, it used to be with a Drake or an S-Line or anything like that. We had a crystal, a bunch of crystals, and a PTO or a VFO. Phase noise was not even an issue. 
uh, then synthesizers came along and that's, uh, you know, somewhat of a problem. Not a problem in every day, but certainly in a contest or in a local locality, <coughs> uh, phase noise can be an issue. We want to have, uh, they want to have spurious, we want to have clean transmit and receive, good speech processor, and all this stuff that listed on here, AGCs that work, and I'll talk about that a bit if you want, because I actually sold my ICOM 7800 because I thought the AGC was crap. So there's a lot of things that are important, but you also need to enjoy using the radio. It has to have a good ergonomics, and uh, you know, it just has to be fun. But so what, what's most important for you guys when it, we're talking about a radio? Well, noise floor and dynamic range, and in this case, close and dynamic range. We say, well, noise floor is not an issue because the um, 75A4 had a wonderfully low noise floor, but to define dynamic range, we have to reference it to something. So it's reference to noise floor. So we got to know the noise floor to say, well, that's our base point, and then we have a dynamic range to <coughs> define from the noise floor. So really, you could say, well, dy dynamic range is the most important, but we have to have the other number. Well, sensitivity that we had in the 40s and 50s, that's your 10 dB signal plus noise to noise. And that's what we've had forever, and we still that's still listed, of course, in all the specs. So how do we measure sensitivity if you've not had a signal generator or done it yourself? You feed in a signal generator, and you tune in the signal, and you adjust that level so that you tune the signal in and you tune away. That difference is measured on an RMS meter, 10 dB. This is with a sideband bandwidth. Sensitivity really is defined for sideband. And so we have that 10 dB difference, and that's, you know, your typical, uh, you know, one microvolt or something like that, half a microvolt. Well, for noise floor, what the league defined was, well, we'll make it a 3 dB signal plus noise, not the 10 dB, but the 3 dB. And they're usually doing that with a CW filter, but you can do it with any bandwidth. You have a noise floor for whatever bandwidth, but it is bandwidth dependent. So if you just tune in the signal and adjust the signal generator, it peaks 3 dB, so you just go on it, off it, and I go, I got it right at 3 dB. That's the noise floor. Now, most overload issues are third order products. We have third, anything that's uh, an amplifier, a mixer, a receiver, it has some distortion, and third order products are the big problem because they're in band. You've got a couple of signals, and the distortion products aren't, you know, megahertz away. They're depending upon the spacing of your signals. So if you've got two signals that are two KCs apart, well, the distortion products are up the band, two KCs from the high frequency signal, and down the band, two KCs from the low frequency signal. Or if those signals are 20 KCs apart, like in the standard league wide space test, or any spacing, whatever it is, if we know the two signals we're testing, we know where the distortion products are going to be. We don't have to wander around looking for them. We know exactly. It's just a mathematical thing. So the the dynamic range is the range in dB that a receiver can uh, receive a weak signal at the same time as getting bombarded with strong signals. And so we're going to talk about close in versus wide space. And then why is close in dynamic range that I were really harped on for over 20 years before the league responded at all. <coughs> and uh, why that's really important for the CW ops. And it's important for the sideband guys, but it's less important for sideband. And why? It isn't because it's a receiver. It has to do with transmitted bandwidth issues. So here's a little description of why the testing was invalid for the Drake, the what I stumbled into in uh, about 1973, and, uh, and why we have to change the test to test the radio. So this is going to be the first IF of a typical radio. Let's just say it's a Pro 3. Um, it's got a wide first IF, it's 15 mm -hmm. KCs wide, but in the case of the Drake it was 8, but the point was it was wide. And so if you feed in two signals that are 20 KCs away, the distortion product is up the band 20, or down the band 20, and so we know where it is. We can see if that 15 KC filter, it's only a four pole filter let's say, but if one signal is 20 KCs away, well that filter is going to knock it down a lot. And the other signal is 40 KCs away, so it's hardly going to pass through the signal, the pass through the filter, get to the next mixer. So you say, well, how can we do, a, in effect, a two-tone test on a receiver if we're rejecting at least one of the tones entirely and the other one mostly? Well, we're not testing anything, but the RF amp, if it has one, or probably with a modern receiver today, the RF amp is on or off of the preamp. It's just right into the first mixer, so really the wide space test only tested the first mixture, as though that was the whole radio. Well, not quite. Well, if you moved them close enough together, and I picked two kilohertz for a simple reason. The Drake had an 8KC filter. I needed to make them 2KCs apart to pass through, and also the distortion products. 
In the case of the wider space, like the 15KC, that's just typical, 